Joan Miller and her husband moved from Maryland to Tucson in the 1990s. Miller took a master gardening class that introduced her to our region's native and desert adapted plants. She's been hooked ever since. But all of that greenery needs some water, as Miller discovered with her growing collection. We've had water bills up to $1,000. Um, and that has been probably about four or five years ago. And I was harvesting pretty heavily even then. You know, we had to come to um, an agreement that we would try to keep the water bill under $700 a month. Fortunately, she's also become well acquainted with water harvesting systems. Her rooftops and containers provide the pathways. Nature takes it from there. With the water harvesting that I've done recently, our water bill is around $150 a month. The efforts that Miller is making are being replicated all over this region, and Jason McComb has been helping out with the process for nearly two decades. McComb is the owner of Southern Arizona Rain Gutters, which he established with his brother in 2005. They thought they were going to be installing gutters part-time, but the business morphed into a full-time operation that's mostly about water harvesting. I would imagine this summer's monsoon helped promote your business, if you will. It did, but you know, ironically, before we even got the rain, this was a very, very busy season. Um, on a typical roof, a thousand square feet of roof with an inch of rain is a little over 600 gallons of water being dumped in there. The Community Food Bank of Southern Arizona has one of the most voluminous tanks in the city. It is adjacent to the warehouse on Country Club Road, next to the prolific garden where you can often find Brandon Merchant. He's the health and garden education coordinator at the food bank. The cistern behind me is uh, one of the larger cisterns in Tucson. It holds about 14,700 gallons of water when it's full. And what I like to tell folks is uh, that represents about what a family of four uses in Tucson every month. So um, that includes, you know, water for your, your laundry, for your landscape, for your dishes, for your swimming pools, all that kind of stuff. And so um, it's a great visualization so people can kind of see like, oh, you know, like that's, that's a whole lot of water that we're using. Here's more information about efforts to collect rainwater with the executive director of Watershed Management Group. The Tucson-based organization has been a trailblazer in this area and other sustainability programs. So we've been um, helping people live hydro-local here uh, for a while now, but we're trying to get that concept out a little bit more, especially this year with the recent declaration of the shortage on the Colorado River. And people are really wondering, what does that mean? What does that mean if our supply of water from far away is going to dry up. Do we have water here? And so we want to let people know that we do have a local water supply, that you can live hydro-local, and that we as a city of Tucson can actually live hydro-local. And part of that is learning all about rainwater harvesting. When people think of water harvesting, they usually think of the pipes and the flows and the tanks. That can be expensive for some yeah. residents yeah. in the city. So you're saying that's not necessary. Yeah, you don't need that at all. I mean, if you can do it, great. But we recommend everyone starts with rain gardens, with basins. And you can do it yourself. So that can keep the cost really low. Um, you can do something as simple as adding wood chip mulch to your yard. Like putting down some mulch, that helps reduce evaporation and reduces your water bill. You don't have to irrigate as much. So there's lots of little things you can do. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Take a class, make a little adjustment, use native plants instead of non-native, that will change your water use. So yeah, there's lots of little things that you can do to get on the path of water sustainability. As part of that, you have some training called Build Your Own Basin. We offer Build Your Own Basin workshops, both virtually and in person. This is the cheapest way, the easiest way for you to do rainwater harvesting. So a basin is a, a depression in the ground, something you can easily dig by hand to collect rainwater passively. And um, here at the Living Lab and Learning Center, this whole campus has these basins or rain gardens. And so through this one hour class, we teach people how to do that themselves. And then we send them home with a kit that they can do it at their own home or in their neighborhood. And what has been your reaction to this very abundant monsoon in 2021? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Happiness, first of all. <laughs> I think we're just all so happy to see all this rain, especially after last year. And um, remembering that our weather is variable, that we have year-to-year -year variability, 
Um, to see the abundance of this monsoon gives us hope, really. And we can see all these basins in action. And the cool thing is, with all the extra rain, we're also seeing recharge happening this summer, which is so important for our groundwater supplies. Many scientists have dire predictions about long-term sustainability of areas like Tucson. Are you confident that we can inhabit this space and live with the resources available? I am, yeah. Yeah, that's the hydro-local message we've been sharing. Um, that if we look at rainwater harvesting, if we look at gray water harvesting, using recycled water, if we are recharging and stewarding our groundwater supplies, and then just generally uh, improving the way we develop our city to have green infrastructure, to have much more efficient fixtures in our buildings, um, we do believe that we can actually meet all our water supplies locally, and we don't have to bring in water from the Colorado River. Lisa Shipik, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much.